Creating a safe area for your pet to enjoy the outdoors is an important part of pet ownership. Come here, Jake. And at PetSafe, we make in-ground wired and wireless containment systems so that you can create a safe area for your pet. Now, training your pet to understand his containment area is an important part of the installation of your system. We've developed this video to help you understand how to best train your pet so that you can both enjoy the freedom that a pet safe system provides. Come on. Whenever you're training your pet, it's important to be patient and consistent. Make training fun rather than stressful for your pet. Train your pet for 10 to 15 minutes at a time. Don't try to do too much too quickly. More frequent short sessions are better than less frequent longer sessions. You want your pet to make positive associations with the containment area. So make it fun. Give your pet lots of praise, treats, and have some playtime while you're going through your training. Now you also want to make sure that while you're training that you use some other method of containment such as a leash or tie out. You should also remove the receiver collar in between sessions. If your pet shows signs of stress such as his ears are tucked or his body is lowered, slow down the training schedule add some additional days of training, or increase the amount of playtime with your pet during training. You can also use food treats to help you. For the sake of communication, we call the area of your yard the pet area, and the end of your containment area the boundary zone. We'll be using these terms throughout the video. Your containment system should be completely installed before you start training. If you need help installing your system, we've created a video for this too. The flags that are provided in your kit, you should go ahead and place those in your yard, about 10 feet apart. Once you've done this, you're ready to get started with your training. Come on, buddy. All right, sit. Okay, it's day one of training. Now, day one is about getting your pet familiar with the pet area and also getting them to make an association with the tone that your receiver collar makes and the pet area. Now, we're going to use this receiver collar to demonstrate. Yours could look a little different but the concept of training will be the same. Now we want to set this collar on level one, which is the tone only setting. Now if your collar doesn't have a tone only setting, you can still help your dog recognize the tone without getting a static correction by either holding the collar really close to their ear as you're getting them familiar with the area, or we also make a cover that will cover the contact points so that your pet can hear the tone, wear the collar, but not get a correction. Now you also want to have a separate collar and leash on your pet that's not attached to the receiver collar. We don't want to put any pressure on these contact points against your pet's neck. You also want to have lots of treats handy and before you start training, spend about five or ten minutes just playing with your pet. Now keeping it fun, take your pet and walk them up to one of the boundary flags until they begin to hear the beep of the receiver collar. Let them hear the beep for about two seconds, then pull them back. Offer them a treat and praise whenever they do return. It doesn't matter if you had to help them with the leash. You want to praise them anyway. Do this again and again, walking them up to the flag till they hear the beep. Oh, good boy, good boy. You want to try to get them familiar with about three flags on day one. You want to keep working with them until they resist going close to that first flag that you started with. Again, offer them lots of praise, keep it fun, and just work in about 10 to 15 minute increments on day one. Now on days two through four of your training, you'll want to start using the static correction feature of your collar. Now if your collar has multiple levels of correction, we recommend that you start on level two and test your pet's recognition of this level. Again, he'll hear the tone and he'll be receiving a static correction, but all pets are different, so they may not even recognize level two. What you want to do is just pay attention to your pet and be aware of their recognition level. If you don't see any recognition, go ahead and increase the collar to level three. Now recognition will be anything from their ears going up, them looking at the ground, or something like this. When you start to see this in your pet, that's the level that you want to train on. So I'm going to put the receiver collar back on Jake. I got it set to a level of correction that he's familiar with. And I'm ready to start training again. Come on, Jake. Let's go. With full control of your dog and the collar set to the level that you've chosen, walk up to the boundary flag. Let your dog get the warning beep followed by the static correction. When they get corrected, pull them gently back into the containment area and say, good dog. Give some praise and a treat. Good boy. 
Now, if your dog experiences any kind of stress when they get the static, just stop, have some play time, reinforce the praise using good dog and other treats. And you just want to keep repeating this process of letting your pet get near the flag, hearing the tone, and getting the correction, and pulling them gently back in. And when they come, offer them praise and a treat. Good boy. As you continue your training on days two through four, you want to keep working with your pet until they resist going into the static correction zone. Just like this. Good boy, Jake. Come on. So around days five through about eight, your pet should be very familiar with the pet area. They should recognize the static correction and the tone along with the flags and not be attempting to go outside the area. However, when they're in their yard, they're probably going to have some distractions. So you want to test and make sure that they aren't trying to go outside the boundary area when something is distracting them. So to test this, you want to get a, a toy like a ball or some treats or something like this that you can actually test this process. So to test this, I'm going to take this ball and I'm going to throw it outside the pet area and Jake shouldn't try to go get it. Ready? Just like that. When they resist the temptation, praise them, give them a treat. Good boy, Jake, very good. And just keep doing this all around the pet area, always praising whenever they don't go after that temptation. Good boy, Jake, come on. After about eight days of consistent training, you're ready to allow your pet in the pet area but off leash. Now your pet is only ready for this stage when they're consistently respecting the static correction area and the pet area. During this time, don't include distractions such as throwing toys outside the boundary zone. Preoccupy yourself with other activities and allow your pet to enjoy the yard. Now if for any reason they do go outside the static correction zone, take the receiver collar off and lead them back into the pet area. You may want to reinforce some of the training that we've already talked about if that happens. After about two weeks of consistent training, most pets are ready to run. You should check in on your pet at regular intervals, making sure they continue to respect the boundary area. After you're satisfied that your pet's training is complete, you can remove every other boundary flag for four days until all flags are removed. You may want to save your boundary flags for future use. Two final important points to note. If you're going to take your pet out of the pet area, you want to remove the receiver collar and replace it with a leash. You also want to leave the containment area at the same place every time. This will help your pet associate leaving the containment area with you, the leash, and this specific spot. You may also have to give them a command such as OK or let's go to let them know it's all right to leave. Finally, you want to take the receiver collar off your pet on a regular basis. Just as humans can get bed sores from laying in one place too long, the same can happen with your pet and a collar. So for their comfort and health, take the collar off at least daily. We know you're going to enjoy the freedom that a pet safe containment system gives you and your pet. If you have any issues with training or installing your system, please call our customer care center. They're standing by to help you. Come on, Jake. Let's go.